Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a real live example of an IRS offer and compromise that we filed that got accepted by the IRS. The taxpayer owed over 400K in tax debt and we settled for about $27,000. We're gonna be going through in detail all the documents used to achieve this outcome. The original 433-656 and all the documents that we filed with the original offer, the rejection letter that we got, our response, and the revised offer. So bear with me as we go through the details of all the documents and all the steps that we did in order to achieve this outcome. If you're looking to hire us to help you with your case, please click on the link in the description below to schedule an appointment with us. Some specifics about this case. The taxpayer was single when he accumulated the tax debt. He then subsequently got married and did not want his spouse to be involved. The taxpayer lives in a community property state, which complicate things a bit as the IRS has their own formula to calculate the allowable living expenses when we are married, but we're filing separate in a community property state. He is self-employed, he has no dependents, and he is a partner in a partnership. So bear with me as we go through everything here. All right, so here's the original 433 that we filed to get this offer started. Um, I mean, the section one's pretty straightforward here, all just basic information. Uh, one thing to note in terms of his situation, uh, his wife bought the house before they were married, therefore it's separate uh, than community property, so we don't include the house in the calculation for the offer, and we noted that right here. Uh, he's married, his spouse's name, all that info. He's not employed. We said he's self-employed, so you see that in a second. And again, no dependents here. Um, personal assets. He just got a bank account with a little bit of money in there. We get that $1,000 exclusion, so there's nothing in terms of for the offer. Uh, no other assets, really. No, no bank account, no other uh, brokerage accounts, retirement accounts, anything like that. Life insurance, nothing. Uh, personal assets, what else? Real property, so he's got no, uh, he doesn't own the house. But he does have two cars, a Nissan and the Ford. We just looked up on kbb.com. His car screenshotted uh, what they valued it at, and that's what we put here, and we actually used that when we filed this offer here, like that screenshot. Uh, the IRS gives us that 80%, so that 8,000 times 80% is that 5,900 bucks. That goes over here, and uh, the Ford, it's 68 Ford, it's an older car, so KBB didn't have, they don't value like, I don't know, over 20 years, something like that. Uh, so we just kind of came up with a value ourselves, the 80%, 4,000. Uh, you'll see here, right, we reduce that 5,900 bucks by the 3,450. The artist just kind of gives us that exemption on the car. Uh, so the 5,900 bucks minus the 34 is that 2,400 bucks. Uh, the 24 plus the four is that 64, 81. And if you're filing a joint offer, this is not a joint offer, this is a separate offer. So we only get the 3,400 bucks once. Uh, if it's joint, you do get the, that twice. But nonetheless, there's that 64, 81 um, that we use towards the offer. No other personal assets, right? Was this uh, valuable items, collectibles, jewelry, nothing like that, furniture. We don't include any of that here. So 64, 81, individual assets. Then like we stated before, he's self-employed, so we put that information in right here. Um, and then he's also a partner in a partnership, so we put that partnership information right there. Right, we check the box, partnership. Uh, business assets, right, he's got some money in his business account, so unfortunately we gotta put that there, okay. Um, let's see here, no other business assets. Uh, let's see here, no receivables either. So the 5,200 bucks, that's, that's in his bank account, so we add that also into the offer. Now, here is the business income and expenses. The income here, the gross income and the total expenses comes directly from the Schedule C on his tax return, his last year's tax return. We get just those amounts uh, and divided by 12, so we get the monthly amounts, and that's what is here. Okay, so 10 minus the seven is at 3470. There's his business income. Plus, we're also saying he gets some dividends or distributions from the partnership, the 24 bucks. Okay, so the 34.94 is his, what we call his household income. Okay, and then we have the household expenses. Um, and again, this is just for him. So this first line here, this comes directly from the IRS's website. 
I'll show you that here. Let's see that. There it is. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll include a link on this one here, but collection financial standard, you just go online, you can grab these, okay? And they give you the food, clothing, other items, national standards, okay, right here. One person, it's just him, 723. This is the current amount right here. Um, and as we noted, right, we're using the older form because we did this a while ago um, and uh, it looks like it was a little bit more prior. So nonetheless, again, food, clothing, Right, that's what we put there. Housing and utilities, on the other hand, this 955 we got from right allocation of mortgage, property tax, and utilities based on income of each spouse. So this is because he's in a community property state, yet we're filing this separate, so we have to do this fund calculation here. We get the spouse's income here, right? And they she gets, I think it was paid like uh, two and a half, I think it's every other week. Uh, so every two weeks, so 2.17 is what the IRS allows. So there's her paycheck, that 33.50. So we want to get the monthly income, and that's what the 17.69 of his uh, of his spouse, and then his income, the 3,400. The total is that 10,000, and then his portion of that income, right, is a 32%. So now we're we're multiplying the 32% by his by the mortgage, the property taxes. Right here's the monthly property taxes. What that is and the utilities. So the total of his percentage is that 955, and we put that right in here. Okay, and then we get the vehicle operating costs. Uh, we get this directly from, again, the IRS's website. We go here down to transportation. And we will see here, right, operating costs. And we got the one car in the West region in LA, 313. So obviously it's gone up, 313. It's, we put right, so, uh, 273. So it's gone up since, but that's nonetheless where we got it from. Health insurance premiums, that's directly from what he's paying in health insurance, just straight off the statement. Current monthly taxes, so he's now paying quarterly taxes and we divide the quarterly by three obviously, and uh, that's what he's paying currently in quarterly taxes, so we put that as an expense. And secured debts, the 550, uh, sorry, 542, that is he had, uh, what was that, student loans. So that's a student loan payment. And the 250, he's also paying back taxes to the state, so including that as an expense here too, okay? Uh, so total expenses, 3,800 bucks. Total income's 34. The difference, you can't get below to zero on this form here. So that's what he's got there. Now calculate the minimum offer, okay? What we're doing here, right? He's got no, what we call disposable income here. So box for box F, box F, remaining monthly income. He's got none. So we kind of skip this section in his case. Um, and then we drop down here. Enter the amount from box A plus box B. A and B are his assets. The business, right? The business, the, sorry, nope right here, the 5237 and the individual assets, the 6481. So 5237 plus the 6481 is that 11, what was it, 11718, right? So here's his offer, is the assets. The total amount in assets he has is what we did use as the offer. Went ahead and answered all these miscellaneous questions, pretty straightforward on there, sign this thing, checked a couple boxes, um, and then we go ahead and filled out the 656, this is like the contract of the offer, okay? I uh, went through, I generally, uh, let's see here. Did you use a pre-qualified tool? You know, I check yes, um, just to see what happens online too. Um, and we did, and uh, it did actually say that he qualified for that. Uh, but that's okay, that's not a requirement. You don't have to use a pre-qualified tool. I think the Irish just wants to get an idea of who's using this thing. Uh, so we just put his name in here. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the first couple things we and then we included all the years that he owes back taxes in the offer. Okay, there it is, and this is for his personal 1040. Uh, let's see, a low income. He's not low income, so we didn't qualify for that. Business information. I probably should have filled this out, but I didn't. Uh, and you'll see later that I had to. Um, reason for offer: data's to collectability, right? Um, that's why we still filled out the 433A is because he's not collectible. So there it is. Uh, 
and we did the lump sum cash offer. We did not do the periodic payment. And you'll notice this, generally speaking, the lump sum cash is a better offer than the periodic payment. But so that's what we did. We did the 11K off that 433, 20% straight forward, 2343, and the remaining balance is gonna be paid over the next five months after it gets accepted. Let's see here. No, I mean, this is all pretty straightforward. Oh, how is he going to pay for this offer since he's got no assets and he really has no income and he's and he was staying that he's gonna get a family loan uh, to be able to pay this. Uh, we're saying we have filed all the returns um, and we are making quarterly payments. That's what that is. And we know, okay, there's a lot of terms to the offer. Sign this thing, sent this thing on over. Um, we sent it over along with all the documents, right? The 433, the 656, we made a check for the 20%. We also uh, filled out a check for the uh, application of the offer. I think it's now 205 bucks is what the IRS has. Uh, we included some bank statements for the business and his personal. The allocation of the expenses, right, that I showed prior. The screenshot of Kelly Blue Book for the valuation of the car. Student loan statement to show that, hey, he still owes student loans and he's been paying them. Uh, the recent returns we just filed, estimated quarterlies that we're currently making, and his spouse's pay stubs is what we sent over. Uh, that was just for the initial offer to, to get this the ball rolling is really what it was. Uh, and the next thing you'll see is the response from the IRS. All right, so here's the response the IRS gave us here. And in response, uh, in short, they rejected the offer. And the reason... In short, the reason they rejected the offer is number one, there was a couple errors in the calculation of the assets where they didn't give us like the thousand dollar allowance in, in our bank accounts and the $3,400 uh, encumbrance is what they call it for the car. And they overstated the taxpayer's income by not taking into account any of the expenses he has for his business. Um, and you'll see that here in the the worksheets the IRS gave us. So it starts out with right here, the assets and equity table that they gave us. So this right here, the 5880 is a, is a combination of his personal uh, bank account, the personal checking that he had and the business. Um, and that was straight off the 433 that we filed. But again, didn't give us that thousand dollar exemption here. These are the two cars and they took the amounts I gave from Kelly Blue Book Looks like I made a mistake here, did not put the correct uh, 20%, but they did correct that. And you know, it is correct there. Uh, I made a mistake, but they did not, again, give us that encumbrance of the 3450 with the car. So um, you'll see later that uh, we did make this change. Uh, and then the second car, this is straight off the 433. So, but nonetheless, net realizable equity, this goes to the offer, right? The 4,800, the 6,500, the 4,000. That's what that 16K is here. That's the assets available to pay off the offer. Um, and here's kind of the details from the IRS on that. Here's the income and expenses. So uh, over here is where the income is. The 5,950, again, you'll see down here, they, they detail that that it, it comes from the average monthly deposits per personal bank statement. So that's like taking the gross income from a business that has no expenses. And I realized this right away and I was like, that's totally incorrect. Uh, but anyways, that's the main reason this thing got rejected is because of that. And it gives him a lot more income in their eyes here. Uh, the K1, $24 they took, the spouse, they you know the exact amount that I put on there, uh, they took as well. Uh, total income, but the amount that's attributable to him is right there, right? His his income from the business and the partnership. Um, and then from the food clothing, right? I put the 727 that was straight from the IRS's website, but what I should have done is put the amount that's from the IRS for two and then his percent of that is what I should have done. So I, I, I made a mistake there too. The housing, they took this straight off my calculations, but again, that's incorrect because what did I have like 32 or 36%? Um, I should have had 52, right, based on their calculations here. But nonetheless, uh, looks like vehicle operating they took, health insurance they took off. Uh, taxpayer told me he was gonna be paying for health insurance and he ended up not paying, his wife was paying, so we didn't get that. But what they did give us was the out-of-pocket medical uh, health care. 
And that's directly from the IRS's website. And you should get that on your uh, 433 when you originally file it too. Looks like I missed that, okay? The IRS did make a correction on in our favor though. Current year taxes we got, the student loans we got, the state installment agreement we did get, and uh, additional expenses. This is the additional uh, car. We got an expense for that as well. Um, nonetheless, let's see here. I think this gives a better breakdown. This is the uh, details of what we saw above there. Um, this gives us a good breakdown here, right? Total income, the 7976, total expenses, right? The difference is the 4341. And what they're doing here is the 4341 times 96. That is the amount uh, of months remaining in the CSED, the collection statute expiration date. If you ever heard of like the 10 years the IRS has to collect on your debt, that is what that CSED is. Um, and so what they're doing is your remaining monthly income, the 4,300 times the amount that's left up to collect the debt. And if you were to be pay that, would you be able to pay off your taxes and if so they're not going to settle with you so that's what they did here to get the uh 416,000 so they took the 416,000 plus the amount of assets that they have uh available at least in their calculation here and the 433 would be like our offer here he owed somewhere i believe it was like 415 so that was more than his offer so they said no we reject the offer you could pay this off um and that's what happened there so Obviously, I knew there was there were some errors here and we needed to make a response. So we did so and the IRS, I talked to the lady over the phone and she said that we need to file some additional docs. All right, so the documents the IRS said that we needed to file with the response after I explained the case for the income and the assets. The IRS wanted updated bank statements from the business and the personal. They had a few uh, questions about some transactions from the bank statements, from prior bank statements. Uh, they wanted a copy of the state payment plan confirmation and a notice showing the total amount due. They were gonna adjust that and you'll see that later. Proof that we actually did pay the quarterly uh, taxes. Uh, an asset list from the business, 1099s issued uh, to contractors of the business so we can get that expense. They wanted a, a, oh, a lot of stuff from the partnership, okay? So we had to file a 433 to the, uh, for the partnership. They wanted bank statements from that and a P&L. They also wanted a 433 from the spouse, bank statements from her, evaluation of her car, updated pay stubs, mortgage statement, and a prior year tax return. Um, real quick, you know, this is the 433B that we filed for the partnership return. It's pretty straightforward, this one. It's just kind of like an informational one uh, for this offer for the for the IRS. But nonetheless, you know, I had to fill out the basic information here. His, uh, you know, the partner's information as well. Let's see, what else do we have? The business assets, what he had in that partnership uh, bank account. They had a vehicle here, but we said this is an income producing asset, so it wouldn't, shouldn't be counted towards that offer because if we don't have that, we're not able to produce income moving forward is kind of like the case for that. Um, so we have his share of that bank account, the 50%, 3,600 bucks. Total business income, total business expense. This is directly from that P&L. Um, and then his share of that, the 50%. Okay, um, that's really all we did for that 433 for the partnership. And then we did the one for the spouse as well. All the basic information here, uh, some of the money in the joint accounts is what we put here, okay? Um, right, we put her 401k, but listed that it is separate property. So um, she, she accumulated this when they before they were uh, married, so this is separate property, not community property, so should not be counted towards the offer. Um, so the sixteen hundred is really just the joint accounts, the personal residence, same thing, separate property. Same with their car. Let's see what else do we have? This is just basically the joint accounts here. Self-employed. Okay, so she is self-employed. She's got like a small side business here, a little bit of money in there. Um, we included that in there as well. Right, there you go, 58 bucks. Here's is her income and expenses as self-employed, but you'll see there's a net loss on the business, so there's nothing left over. 
Um, really just the joint, um, sorry, that's her wages, the $7,200 in the original one too, and then her expenses as a uh, separately. Okay, so she's got some income left over. But again, this is a separate offer, so this is kind of just for informational purposes on the IRS's end. Okay, and they do require that we fill this out um, to continue the offer process. Um, so there is the reject letter, uh, all the stuff that we sent over in response to the reject. And next you'll see the response from the IRS uh, to include the, the encumbrance for the vehicle, the exemption for the cash on uh, the bank accounts, and the expenses from the business. All right, so after we sent over everything in response to the original rejection, this is what we got back from the IRS. Um, and again, it looks very similar to the first one we got, but with some obvious corrections here, right? We got the $1,000 um, off the bank account, which we should have gotten. We got the $3,400 uh, encumbrance, that's what they call from the car. So we got those two. She added all the tools from the asset list from the business but since we said that all of these are income producing assets then um this you'll see does not actually that's what that asterisk is here um it says it's somewhere in here hey, there it is business assets were not not included because they're income producing so that's what that is so really all that goes towards this offer is the the cash the car and then this car down here. So that's what that 12,000 is here. Then, and that's what this is saying here. Um, and then we have our revised income uh, and expenses. So actually down here in detail, here it is. Okay, so we got, this is from the P&L, but then we couldn't verify some expenses, some labor expenses, as I said, Prior. So that's what that um, eight hundred dollars is. But that uh, forty three twenty two is his total income from his sole proprietorship. Plus the partnership started making a little bit more money, so they added a little bit more um, in terms of distributions from the partnership. Spouses' wages, kind of the same thing. So total uh, total is that eleven eight. Uh, he's got the forty six hundred. So. 46 over 11 is that 39%. We're now multiplying that 39% by the standard for food clothing that comes from uh, the IRS's website. And then the housing and utilities we're doing, uh, so they gave us the standard and uh, the IRS multiplied that by the, the 39%. We get the full amount for the operating expense of the car. The health insurance um, is not paid by him, so we did not get that. We got the uh, out-of-pocket medical, I think it was like 50, geez, what is that, $55 a person times two, um, and then 39% of that. And then the student loans, he gets the full amount, the full amount quarterly taxes, and then he, he only gets a portion of what he pays to, um, to the state because they do this uh, calculation of the total amount of state debt that you have over the total IRS debt you have and there's a percentage and that's the percentage that 16% is what they're multiplying by your monthly payment and that's what you get as a deduction here uh, so total monthly expenses is the 3376 total income is the 4600 1200 is what's left over we did the lump sum uh, as seen on the 656 amended 656 here it is right we did the lump sum here so you have to you have to do it times the uh the 12 geez i'm so sorry it is right here the multiplier down here so when you do the lump sum this is what we're following here and you're going to get the monthly remaining income by 12 so that's what the iris is doing here oops They're doing the remaining monthly income by 12. So that's what that 15K is. So you'll see his 15K is what we see up here. Plus our assets of the 12 is the 27. So we got the offer for the 27. Um, we eventually said, okay, we got the offer. This is the letter we got. We have accepted the offer and compromise. You signed dated. This is the golden ticket is what I say um, for the offer and compromise. He ended up paying the remaining amount 
to the IRS for the 27. And this is what's saying, thank you for your payment. You have met the provisions. Once we get this, we're done. You're, you're, everything's good with the, uh, with the offering compromise. Um, let's see here. So in terms of like a timeline, we ended up sending the offer in in April of 2019. We heard back from the IRS within six months. It was September of 19. Uh, and then we finally came to agreement in November of 19. So it was pretty quick. Within, within a year, um, we came to an agreement. But then, uh, of course, everyone knows the pandemic hit at like the uh, beginning of 2020. And we didn't end up getting the acceptance letter until August of 2020. So it took a long time. Uh, pandemic definitely didn't help us, but uh, that was kind of the timeline. This thing kind of moved pretty quickly. Uh, we were able to respond quickly. The IRS was on top of getting things back to us. Um, well, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, do us a big favor, subscribe to our channel, like the video, share it. Um, do all the rest. Thank you so much for watching.